Hey guys, it's Elliot here from the product team at Soundcraft and welcome to chapter 3 of our UI series tutorial videos. Today I'm going to be covering the main fader page. So, once you have connected to the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet of a UI series mixer, you will see the main fader page. This page has some familiar appointments and is the part of the mixing console that will serve as your go-to screen for all of your mixing duties. The main section of the screen displays all of the input and output fader strips present on your UI console. Each channel strip features a numerical display here for things like dB value and pan position, an independent pan control here, a mute button, solo button, a peak meter here that will display red when a channel is overloading. Here we have a combined PFL and AFL meter. I'll explain more in a second. Below that we have a gate closed indicator that will light up indicating the gate is closed and then below that further we have a gain reduction meter which corresponds to your compressor settings on that single channel. For demonstration purposes I am sending a tone generator into channel 1 of our UI series console. You can see here that channel 1 is displaying this blue meter. A blue meter is our PFL level or pre-fade level. This meter is taken just after the gain control of our console, but before our processing channel. This means we can see how the signal is reacting in going into the console. If it was up here and peaking, we could tell that our input level is set too high. Now if I raise my fader here, you can see another level appearing. This is our AFL meter or after fade level, and this displays how our channel is outputting post-processing and post-fader into our mix bus over here. If I was running this very hot near the top and we'd have our peak light here indicating that the channel is overloading post-processing and post-fader. We should just back that down a bit. Our channel labels here contain a few hidden settings that we can access by simply pressing and holding down on the channel label. Here we have options for loading channel presets that we have saved or factory presets that we have uh, saved in ourselves here. We can rename the channel like so. We can also copy the channel settings and paste it to a different channel. Assign that channel to a subgroup. My colleague will be talking more about subgroups in a further video. We can also use our stereo link feature here which will actually take channels one and two and pair them together. You can see now that they raise together. And we also have the pan is automatically set left and right. We also have the option to reset the channel back to factory default, like so. Press OK. Now the fader's back to zero. And finally, we have a setting here to assign that channel as me. Now, I'm going to be talking about this more in a further tutorial, but this is to do with our more me feature. Laid out across the page, we can see channel strips 1 to 8. These correspond to the first 8 XLR inputs on a unit itself. If I grab the fader bay and swipe the screen to the left, I can access the next group of channels. Here are the line inputs left and right. These correspond to the RCA inputs on the unit itself. We have our stereo USB playback here. That comes from the USB play socket. We have three effects returns here on our UI12. We have four subgroup masters here in pink. And then finally we have two aux masters here that correspond to the XLR outputs on the unit itself. At the top of the screen here we have our L1 navigation bar. This bar is always present and features quick navigation buttons for the most frequently used sections of the console. Perhaps the most important button on the L1 tab is the mix gain button. This button will toggle the view on the main fader page between the mix window, which is what we see here, and the gain window. The gain window is easily identifiable by the red colour scheme, the red mix gain button and the change of control parameters. The faders have now flipped to become the input gain level, which is much the same as you'd find on the top of an analogue mixer. We can also see we have a phantom power switch here, a phase reverse button, some channels have a high Z impedance switch. We have a PFL meter, our input gain itself, and the channel label is still at the bottom here. 
Returning back to the mix page and moving along the L1 navigation bar, we reach the edit button and the aux sends and effects sends button. Now I'll talk more about these in a, another tutorial video. Up here on the L1 tab, we also have a USB media button and a settings button that I'll talk about more further on. In this box, we can recall snapshots of the console. A complete picture of the console and all of its settings can be stored in this menu as a snapshot, which can be recalled during a show or a performance. I will talk more about the automation system in another tutorial. Finally, we have our slide out feature. The slide out features time saving navigation keys as well as access to onboard mute and view groups. These top four buttons can be used as quick navigation to specific channel types in the mix window. If I select the AUX masters, for example, the mix window displays only the two AUX masters. If I select the effects returns button, the mix window displays only the three effects returns. If I select inputs up here, I can see I have input channels one to seven and I can scroll across and reach channel eight here. Now, if I deselect the inputs tab up here, the surface has now returned to the default view, which is everything on one layer essentially. On the slide out feature itself, we have a few more buttons that we'll be talking about in a further tutorial.